What's going on everyone? No Zoop for you here, and the Captain or Commander Skill rework is upon us. I'm going to walk you through that right now for battleships today. We're going to focus on each class. Kind of crazy, things are a little different. We've got a nice little new Commander symbol right here. So things have changed significantly, and you can see this layout right here is a lot different. Things are going to be portioned off now by attack skills and defensive skills. First thing I'm going to do right here, though, is just show you this layout. You have options for destroyers. You've got options for cruisers. You've got options for battleships. And you've got options for aircraft carriers. Obviously, if you're in a battleship, you're going to want to stick to the battleship options. Now, in the future, we'll kind of look into whether or not there, there are reasons you might want to use cruiser settings and a destroyer or something else. I can imagine special circumstances for that. But here we go. Gun feeder, attack skill. So again, left side, attack skills. This just changes the amount of time to switch your guns. Pyrotechnician, this increases your chance of fire by 1%. Not a lot right there. And this is something that even though it's recommended, and it tells you it's recommended by being yellow, I'm not going to use I'm going to redistribute all my skills right here. It's going to suck doing this for every single ship, and I, I kind of wish you could mass do that for every ship. And I wish Wargaming gave you one freebie for every single ship permanently until you get that done. Maybe they did. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Consumable specialist. It decreases the time for all your consumables. That's nice. Now, moving on to the other side, defensive skills. Your defensive skills, once again, on the right-hand side, offense, defense. Incoming fire alert. This is what warns you about incoming salvos. Again, probably not going to use that for battleships. Preventive maintenance. Again, probably not going to use that for battleships too often. You might. It just depends where you have your points at. So once again, you see this little symbol here, recommended skill, highlighted in yellow. That tells you that the game's telling you you should probably use it if you can't make up your mind. But that's not always going to be what you want to go with. I'm going to go with Emergency Repair Specialist just because I expect this ship to be on fire a lot as are usually the big battleships. Grease the Gears, 20% main battery traverse speed. That's actually pretty generous, especially in the two-point slot. Can't remember what it used to be. 20% seems pretty fast, though. IFHE is now two-point skill. Not really going to use that, though, on a battleship, even for your secondaries. Consumable Enhancement, this gives you more time on your consumables, so my Hydro could be increased by 10%. Moving over to the defensive side, you've got Torpedo Detection, Priority Target, warning you how many people are firing at you. And last but not least, you have AA Gunner, which increases your AA damage. So this is where things get a little tricky and where you're going to have to decide whether you want to be more of an offensive type of ship or a defensive type of ship. And that's what this new commander skill loadout is attempting to do. It's giving you choices where it used to be really cookie cutter in what you want. And I'm choosing the turret speed just because uh, we're using the Kerfurst here as an example. And it's got a pretty slow, slow turret speed as it is. Super heavy AP shells. Plus 5% to the damage of main AP shells. That That's kind of nice, but there's so many other things with three points, like the long-range secondary battery skill, which absolutely want for a secondary ship. Adrenaline Rush is three points now. Basics of Survivability is three points. That's over on the defensive side. You've got your Enhanced Torpedo Protection. This is a nice addition. It reduces torpedo damage by 10%. If you get hit by torps a lot, you might want that. And then expert AA gunner. I'm not making this an AA ship. I'm making it a secondary ship, so I'm taking the long range. In the four slot, you've got Deadeye, which is an attack skill. But you only get a 10% decrease in dispersion if you're not spotted, which is interesting. Improve secondary battery. Obviously, I'm going to want to take that and occur first for a secondary ship. So, again, this Deadeye skill is just very strange, and I don't see a lot of people using this. Increases firing accuracy, main battery, within the ship standard detectability range, if there's no visible hostile ships. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it to me. However, improved secondary battery, yes. Close quarters combat, I want to take this as well for that decrease in secondary reload time. Plus, there's also a main battery 
decrease as well. And of course here on the defensive side, emergency repair expert, that speeds up things a little bit. Concealment, you know, I'd love to take it, but I just don't have the room. And then you've got fire prevention right here, which is all important, decreases things by 10% chance and minus one to the maximum fires. Standard affair right there. Now, the one thing you might see here, which is kind of nice, is once you put a commander skill in, it's not set in stone. So you can change things around if you want at the end, if you don't like something. You couldn't do that before. Also, another thing you'll notice is I've got a 19 point captain. Well, it goes up to 21. And if you want those extra two points, you need to pony up about 1.5 million free commander XP, which is not worth it. And I, I think this is unfortunate as well. I think Wargaming should have given that to you if you had a max captain, but they're not doing that. I, I don't like that. I really don't. I, I think that if you have a 19 point captain, they should have given you the 21 point captain free. So Wargaming, a little slap on the wrist there. But this is going to be the loadout I go with on the Kerr first. And I, I feel pretty comfortable with this. I'm not going to use that last one point skill because once I get those two extra points to max the captain, I'm going to want to put those in the three point section. Once you're done, you hit master, you get one more warning, and then boom, this is your setup. And I, I do like this. I think it's going to add... Um, it's going to add to play styles. It's going to give you options, which you didn't have before. Now, Kerr first, I don't know why I selected this ship. It was in port. This is what came up. So I decided to use this as my example. The cool thing here is, which, you know, a lot of people are saying that secondaries on German battleships got nerfed, but I heard Wargaming buff them. And when you actually go in there and look at the artillery section of this and you look at the range on your German your German secondaries there's a little surprise waiting for me that I wasn't expecting and that is the fact that they now have a maximum range of 12.5 kilometers yay so uh, I'm gonna definitely give this ship a roll I'm gonna see how it works with the new commander skills loadout but that was a walkthrough of your battleship commander skills and just what I'm going with for a secondary build out for German battleships and obviously in the future I'm going to do this for destroyers, cruisers, and aircraft carriers but starting with the most popular class well I think battleships are probably the most popular class yeah I'm fairly certain they are so very very interesting you know th this whole rework is going to be a game changer for a lot of people and it remains to be seen whether or not it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing for the game. I, I think a lot of players at first are probably going to grumble with that because it, it is a pain in the rear going in to every single ship you have and redoing every single commander you have. It, it's a pain in the rear, especially for players that have been around for five years and you've got hundreds of ships in your port. I mean, that's a hundred different captains you've got to respect commanders and I, I don't think a lot of people are going to be too excited about doing that and again the other thing that I want to touch on that I'm a little upset about is the whole fact that it's really really expensive to get that final two points in there so I really think Wargaming missed out on an opportunity to reward players that had a max captain or commander they should have given it to them they didn't I guess it is what it is, so you're just going to have to play to get those extra two points. And once again, if you've got a ton of ships, you know, how often do I play the Kerr first? I, I don't know. I, I don't play it that often with so many Tier 10s and so many other ships. So getting those extra two Commander skills is going to take a very long time, if it ever even happens. It could take up to a year, if not longer, because I only play this ship every so often. So... Missed opportunity there, but overall, time will tell what happens with the commander skills. This was a look at the battleship commander skills and a setup, just a really quick setup for secondary battleships. Um, I, I, I think overall, though, the commander skill upgrade needed to happen and it might be a good thing. So anyhow, I want to know your thoughts. This was a little tutorial, just a little walkthrough, and hope you all are doing great. Take it easy. Catch you all later. Zoop out.